Hi everyone, my name is Jason Koo, and today I want to go over PromptFu's assertion types just at a very broad level. So if you haven't heard of PromptFu before, PromptFu is an open source CLI tool for e running evaluations on uh, large language model prompts and also allows you to run red teaming simulations. Broadly speaking, there are two types of assertions available in PromptFu. The deterministic metrics. Now these are gonna be like your very familiar algorithmic type uh, checks, right? So equals, contains, uh, is it syntactically matching, you know, like a JSON format or a SQL uh, query. The other category of tests are the model graded metrics. Now these metrics or assertions are backed by a large language model that is, it can be the same one that you're testing or another model altogether that's going to evaluate the output answer and determine if it matches your criteria. The one that's spun up when you first run PromptFu config as an example is the LLM rubric uh, option. And for this one, you just basically pass it a prompt like, write me a witty YouTube title. So you can ask the rubric grader, um, does this title rhyme? Is this title witty directly? Now, PromptFu has 10 model graded metrics that you can use and 28 uh, deterministic uh, metrics. So from here, I'm going to jump into a promptfu config.yaml file so you can see what this looks like. The great thing with promptfu is you have only a single config file, this this one YAML file, and it is broken up generally into three parts, right? The prompts, these are the prompts that you're going to run against an embedding model or a large language model. Providers, providers is a list of one or more models that you're testing this prompt against. And then all the assertions are under the test block. Now, the assertions in the test block really only need uh, this component here, right, where you're defining the assert. Definitely need, you need a type that specifies which type of assertion you're running. And then here, it's going to be either value or threshold. Uh, this other second argument is going to be determined by the type of assertion that you're running. Okay, so here description is optional, but this is going to be very handy if you have many tests and you want to be able to quickly determine what this assertion is, is testing for. Vars is where you would list any dy dynamic variables that is de defined or used in the prompts uh, as specified by double open and closing braces. Okay, so here I've just got a, a prompt here testing a text to cipher model. Cipher is a, a query language for running against graph databases. So here I'm asking, create a cipher query that writes data to create an ontology for a particular domain space. And then the domain will be a var. So here I'm checking, um, you know, if I'm looking for healthcare ontology, that the output exactly equals, this will most certainly fail. So this is an example of a, a string comparison, uh, very unlikely um, in this sort of general prompt space that I'm going to get any string that equals uh, something exactly. So more likely you'll use something more like the contains dash any option. Now there are quite a few contains variations, right? There's a single contains for matching a single string, but if you do contains any, then as you come up with more options, you can just add to this list. Uh, there's also a contains dash all. So every one of those, those keywords has to be present in the output. So different types of combinations you can do. There's even ones for um, making for uh, regardless of casing. Okay, so here, as you can see here for the value for a list, slightly different format than a single value. And as far as I can tell, you can use single quotes or double quotes. They both uh, appear to work when I test. Okay, so if I were to just run this, this will most certainly fail. Uh, okay, uh, but this other one that contains any might pass. All right, so to run prompt foo, just do prompt foo eval. All right, so I did have one success, one failure. So we can see the uh, direct string equals definitely failed. And the one that contains, uh, here I put uh, age and sex, which are typical properties you would have in you know medical data. So that passed here. Uh, another thing you can do, uh, regardless of the type of test, is you can have weighted test. So when you have multiple assertions, you can add a weight variable and define, um, what the threshold for passing is uh, by adding a threshold variable outside of the assert. So here I have a threshold of 0.3, and then I gave the direct equals only a weight of one, and uh, contains check 
uh, weight of two. So, you know, if it even if it passes just this straight equals, it, it would pass. Uh, so you can do different combinations of thresholds and combinations of asserts if you wanted. Now, moving to an example of a model assisted test. Here again, this is the LLM rubric example, and here I I'm just using uh, this is the value, this is the prompt that that uh, grader will use to test the output from the other model. Okay, so this one's actually showing two things here, right? So this one is showing uh, a list of values that would be acceptable, and if any one of them are passed, it will be accepted. This threshold is for the, the similarity threshold. Okay, so this is an example of how you can start to work with and set up assertions in the YAML file. All the values for like the prompts, the assertion values, even the assertion prompts, they can also point to other files. So you don't have to put all your definitions in the .yaml file. You can use uh, JavaScript functions even, Python functions, uh, txt files, CSV files. So you have a number of options for uh, setting up these tests outside of just this YAML file. Okay, so if there are a lot of assertions that you start to build up and you're just going to use them often across different um, different projects, different models, you can also create templates and then point uh, references to those those templates and, and reuse them. You can also do named metrics. So when you name them, you can then uh, combine them actually uh, later to do derived metrics. So if, for example, you want to find the average uh, output or the average pass rate of a certain combination of tests, you can first give them a named metric and then you'll combine them and then they should appear in the GUI output uh, aggregated. And to set those aggregations like an average score, you can put, uh, as, uh, as the documentation says here, it's using a math.js syntax. So if you are familiar with that syntax or can find references to it, just put that directly into the uh, derived metrics uh, block. Okay, last things I want to talk about is the moderation feature, which is where you can, again, use an LLM model to uh, check the output for certain categories of output, right? So is there hate speech? Is there harassment? Is there some sort of uh, violence suggested in that? And then the very last thing is guardrails. Now, unfortunately, uh, guardrails is only available through uh, Amazon guardrails and uh, Azure's content filters. So if you don't have access to either of those services, then you may want to use moderation model assisted graders. All right, so that is a very high level overview of PromptFu's evaluations and assertion types. You know, the team over there has done a fantastic job of giving folks a ton of options for running tests. Definitely check out the documents. Good luck, happy coding, and see you in the next one.